Praise God. Well, welcome to Healing and Communion Rally Night. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, go ahead and you can open your Bibles to the fourth chapter, the book of Proverbs. Hallelujah. We'll be ministering for a little while on a sub, the subject of a healing or faith and healing. We'll, uh, we'll see as the Spirit leads, and then we'll be praying for the sick or praying for prayer clause, whichever we have need of tonight. Glory to God. Glory to God. F.F. F. Bosworth in his book, uh, if you don't have the book, in youth church, you can go ahead. F.F. Um, F. Bosworth in his book, Christ the Healer, and that's a classic book. If you don't have that, you need it. You need it in your library. It's, a, um, it's one of those things you, when you become a Christian, they just shot, you ought to have in your library. And um, it's, it's a good book. But he said this, he said, appropriating faith cannot go beyond one's knowledge of the revealed will of God. Simply put, faith begins where the will of God is known. Okay, if you don't know what God's will is, you can't exercise faith. Okay, because you've got to know what God's will is to be in faith about something. You've got to know that God promises or God has provided something for you in order for you to appropriate it in faith. Otherwise, you're praying, if it be thy will. Now, uh, if it's something like going to China as a missionary, you don't have a scripture that says that, Dick, thou shalt go to China as a missionary. So you can't go to the Bible and find that scripture. You have to, you have to, uh, you have to um, find that in prayer. Now, we do know the Bible says that, you know, he's called people to go to the world, to go to different places. Um, you know, he set people in the, in the offices of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. The Great Commission is to go into all the world. So if God speaks to you and says, go to China, then you have scripture that su supports that. But we don't have a specific scripture that says, thou shalt go. So you have to find that in prayer, and you have to say, Lord, if it's your will for me to go, I'll go. However, there are scriptures that are um, founded, and you don't have to pray about them. You don't have to pray, Lord, save me if it's your will. God's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. You know, uh, God wants you well. First Peter 2, 24, by his stripes ye were healed. If there's any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray with them. The anointing of all and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. If there's any committed any sins, they'll be forgiven him. And so we find scripture that supports um, the fact that God wants you well. Then you don't need to pray if it be thy will. You just need to act on the word. So if there's not, if there is specific scripture that covers something from you, for you, from the word, then you just act on it in faith. You don't have to pray if it be thy will because he's already told you what his will was. It'd be foolish to call people up to an altar call and say, come on down here. God might save you if it's his will when the Bible's already told us it's his will. Amen. And so we, they couldn't come in faith. Let me tell you something. If you invited somebody to an altar call and they came up and then you went, well, you never know. Come on down. This might be the day. God, this just might be the day that God saves you. Well, uh, if, that's the, if that's the way you're approaching it, they won't have any faith to be saved. They'll be coming down, oh, God, if it be your will, save me. Oh, God, I don't know if you want to save me or not, but I sure hope you do. And if you do, please save me. You know, uh, that's, that's not faith. You're hoping. You're wishing. I mean, you're just kind of going at it from the standpoint of just maybe. This might be my day. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I need to say hallelujah over and over again. I got my own amen corner going on. <laughs> hallelujah. Praise God. So, if you desire to receive any blessing from God, including healing, it's imperative that the word on the matter is understood. Solomon so eloquently states this in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes, uh, for they are life to those that find them, and health or medicine to all their flesh. So when we find the Word of God, it will produce life in us. Why? Because the Word of God is full of the life of God. Amen? Hallelujah. He goes on and says this, until uh, Bosworth does in his book, Christ the Healer. He goes on and says, until we know <coughs> excuse me, what God's will is, there is nothing to base our faith on. Bible faith is an action based upon a belief that is based upon the revealed knowledge of God's Word. Anything else is simply futile. When God's will is known and acted upon, then and only then is it faith. And it is faith released, and there can be faith results. Romans 12, 2 tells us that, we're, that uh, we're to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. 
The mind renew, rule, renewal breaks world conformity, world thinking, and most importantly, world limitations. Amen. We serve a limitless God with limitless power. It is our duty to feed upon the word and to hear it taught and preached. For in so doing, we position ourselves to be men and women of faith. Why? Because Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So as we approach the subject of divine healing, we need to do what the Bible says about it. Now, we got a lot of church folk that got opinions. Amen? Grandma had an opinion. One of these days. I know one of these days the Lord's going to heal me. Or you go to a funeral. Oh, they got the ultimate healing. No, actually, they didn't get healed. Their body's in the ground. It won't be raised up until Jesus comes back. Think about it. That body went into the ground, goes back into the dust, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. It is at the return of the Lord, <clears throat> amen, that that body's resurrected in newness of life, a, spirit, a, new, a new spiritual body, amen? So, we make a lot of statements that aren't biblically accurate we, and, and in an attempt to console people. Now, if, there, if you be absent from the body and you be with the Lord and your body was racked with pain, you're not in pain anymore, obviously, because you don't even have it. Amen? But healing, healing is for the now. It is for the physical body in this existence. In other words, when you are in your body and on the earth, the, the, the healing is for that body. When you get to heaven, you don't get a, you don't, listen, I'm going to tell you something. When you get to heaven, you won't even have the same body. What did Paul write to the church of Thessalonica? That the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout, the trump of the archangel, amen, and we which are alive and remain into the covenant of the Lord shall be, trans, uh, shall be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. For this corruptible shall put on incorruption and this, um, Can you believe I just forgot it? Well, it wasn't in my notes. I wasn't planning on going there. Hallelujah. And this mortal shall put on immortality. There we go. Hallelujah. You know, it says, he says, they which, they which are asleep shall not prevent us. In other words, they're not going, you know, we're, we're, not, we're going up and we're going to meet at the same time. They're coming up out of the ground. As they come up out of the ground, we're going to be changed. And when they come up out of the ground, they're not getting their old body back. They're getting a glorified body. An incorruptible, immortal body. So it's not even the same body. That body won't get healed. It'll be a totally transformed body. You'll be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. This corruption put on the incorruption, this mortal put on immortality. And we'll be changed, the Bible says. And so we don't get healed when we go to heaven. Sorry. So healing is for the now. It, it is a promise of God for the soundness and wholeness of the physical body while you're in your body on the earth. Everybody say glory. glory. <clears throat> now, I know people come along and preach things like, you know, that we, that we get the, the healing is the forgiveness of sin. It is the healing of the soul. Well, if you study your Bible, your soul gets renewed. Your spirit gets born again. And your body gets preserved. Amen. You have to keep your body under. You have to keep your body, uh, you know, with the mark of the Holy Ghost. You got to get your body. Healing belongs for your body. All right. And so God gave us his word to reveal his will to us. The Holy Spirit sent, was sent to teach us the word. Amen. Jesus said the spirit of truth would come and teach us his word. Uh, when the word is revealed to us, faith accompanies it. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. Isn't that what it says? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Uh, and then James 1, 22 and 20, 21 and 22 tell us to uh, you know, receive the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Amen. So the word of God comes to us. The word of God is full of faith. Say the word of God is full of faith. In other words, it will produce faith in you when you act on it and, and receive it and act on it. Amen? So when you receive the Word of God, when the Word of God comes, there's faith in it. Amen? And it's faith to be released in you so you can go act on it. And the Bible says if you receive the engrafted Word of God and don't do it, remember it said, and be doers of the Word, not hearers only, deceiving your own self. We need to act on that Word. Everybody say glory. glory. Everybody, somebody say Shonda. I need some old charismatics in here. I didn't hear Shonda. Oh, there you go. All right, Shunda. Hallelujah. My old friend for Wallace would say Skilly Banda. Hallelujah. 
we have to understand God's beginning of things. Did you know God created man well? He didn't create him sick. Sickness only came after the fall. Death only came after the fall. Poverty only came after the fall. Hello? These were not original, these were not original intents in God's plan. God intended man to be healthy, wealthy, and wise all the days of his life. Whole, healed. I mean, sound. As a matter of fact, you were never, you were never designed to taste death. But if you go back to Genesis, God said when you eat the fruit, Hebrew actually says this, that in, in, in dying you shall die. In other words, you'll die spiritually and it'll cause you to die physically eventually. Adam lived 900 years after he died spiritually. The years were shorter in those days. They were half as long as they are now. Oh, 450, okay. You know, people come up with some uh, cockamamie things. 450 is still a pretty long time. What do y'all think? No, that's just, that's just goobity got somebody tries to come along with. And, and, and they, they don't even listen to their own self. Well, you know, man, just, you know, they said they lived 900 years, but the years were shorter. They, they measured them differently. They were half as long as they know are now. Okay, so they lived 450 years. That's still a lot longer than people live in the day. Amen. That's still a long time. So they, they, they just basically dissuade their own argument by being foolish. Are you here? God's will for man was, uh, will is birthed out of his purpose. One must be a careful student of the first three chapters of Genesis. First chapter, we see the, the hand of the Creator carefully laying the groundwork for a special creation, man. After each endeavor, the Word says God saw that it was good. You go back and read that for Genesis 1 and, and so forth. Yet after the creation of man, He said that it was very good. Amen. God created things good, but man, He created very good. We see no sign of sickness, pain, defeat in mankind until after the fall. Then and only then, because of the trees of the man, did the wrath of Satan begin to take its toll on the wonderful creation of God. Satan is a liar. Eat the fruit and you'll be as God's, knowing both good and evil. Now, he wanted to destroy God's creation. And he began to wreak havoc on the creation of God. As soon as he got control of man, he began to institute his perversion into everything. Righteousness became a sinful nature. Poverty, I mean, prosperity became poverty. Life became death. Health became sickness. It was not so in the beginning. It became so after the fall. This is the stated order in which to show God's purpose in man's creation. This purpose is his will. This is further carried and revealed in the first compound covenant name that God gave to the children of Israel, that his name was Jehovah Rapha. Over in Genesis chapter 15, I mean Exodus, I'm sorry, Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. And if you'll diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep his statutes. I will put name, or allow, as the tense of the Hebrew verb is, none of these diseases upon thee which I have allowed upon the Egyptians, for I am Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth thee. Now, you know, now God has seven compound covenant names in the, New, in the Old Testament. I'm sorry. Jehovah Shammah, the, the, Shama, the Lord is there. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is our peace. Jehovah Ra'ah, uh, the Lord is our shepherd. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Remember, God gave that to him. Uh, God called the name of that. I mean, I'm sorry. Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Rapha, uh, Jehovah Jireh, when the lamb, the ram was found in the thicket when he went up to offer Isaac. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is our banner of victory or our captain. Jehovah Tzitkenu, the Lord is our righteousness. And then Jehovah Rapha, the Lord is our physician or the Lord is our healer. Now, we have seven compound covenant names of God. And the name Jehovah, now we've talked about this before, comes from the Hebrew letters. And, and then you've got to understand, when we say Hebrew letters, they are transliterations. In other words, we take the English equivalent, equivalent to the Hebrew lettering, and then we, tra we transliterate it. It's not an actual translation. We just take and match an English letter to match their Hebrew letters, Okay. So, but it is the Hebrew four-letter words, Y-H-W-H. Now, in German, in German theological circles uh, around the 12th or 13th century, they translated that and added vowels to it, and it became Jehovah. Okay? And they didn't have, J, they, didn't, they didn't recognize J, uh, the, uh, the, they recognized the J, so they put the J for there. So they put J-H-W-H, and they put an E, and then an H-O, and a V, and then an A-H, and became Jehovah. Now, you've heard more recently, uh, more people using the term Yahweh, Y-A-W-E-H. Now, it's the same foreign letters. It's just two different schools of theology that translated them with different spelling or rendering into English 
to come up with a transliteral word Jehovah or Yahweh. Same word. So come from the same Hebrew four letters, okay? So if you hear Jehovah or if you hear Yahweh, we're exact same reference. The foundation of those words and an attempt to make them pronounceable in our language come from the YHWH Hebrew letters. It is the covenant name of God. God gave the, that as the, as, as the covenant name he had. It is his covenant name to Israel, the natural Israel, that he gave them, that he was the covenant-keeping God, the God who keepeth covenant. Amen. And so he declared himself as Yahweh, Jehovah, Y-H-W-H. And, and if you're using a King James Bible, I don't know what other translations do it, but I know what King James does it. If you see the word Lord in all small caps, in other words, all capital letters but are smaller than the regular print, that is that word, the Y-H-W-H. The Jews believe historically that that word at one time was pronounceable, but because they would not pronounce it, they forgot how to. It was so, they said the name of God was so holy, they wouldn't even pronounce it. And when they, when they transcribed YHWH in transcribing scripture, they would get up and go cleanse themselves because his name was so holy. That they had just written that name, it was, it was so holy, they couldn't pronounce, they wouldn't pronounce it. And then because it was so holy, even writing it, they had to go cleanse themselves because they weren't, they weren't worthy to even transcribe his name. Okay? So that name carried a lot of power and a lot of symbolism in, in, in the culture of uh, Hebraic uh, history. But, it, you know, with us, we understand that it's his covenant name that he gave to them. And then over a period of time, he began to give an increasing self-revelation of himself through that covenant name with hyphenated names through that covenant. The very first one, now I would think, you know, that uh, in, if, we were, if we were running things, the first one we probably would have translated would have been Jehovah the Sitkinu, the Lord our righteousness. In other words, he's our Savior. That's not the one he chose. And don't you find that? Sometimes I, I go back and I think, and I just kind of, you know, kind of analyze it. Why did God choose this first? Because it's important to him. See what I have people say? Well, the most important thing in the world <clears throat> is to get saved. I've even said it. And it is. But God, even in the midst of getting people saved, being the most important thing, gave his first compound covenant name, one of physical health. Amen. Of all the covenant names he could have chosen to be the first one he revealed, this is the one. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, your phys our physician. Okay. <coughs> so this last phrase, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Hebrew is Jehovah Rapha. Again, Y-H-W-H, Rafa, we understand that. We're, we're, have we all got that? You know, we, like, we like to make you learn. And so, because sometimes people come along and they'll say stuff and they'll try to undo your beliefs just by, by manipulating your lack of understanding of, of things. So I want you educated. Okay? So when they say stupid stuff, you kind of go, hey, I'm, I'm on top of that one, baby. Amen. All right? This is the first covenant name that God gave, compound covenant name that God gave to Israel, which was the covenant of health. Why? Because God's purpose for man was health. His will was revealed in his name. Dr. Schofield in his Bible, in his study notes, says this, Jehovah is distinctly the redemptive name of deity. It means the self-existent one who reveals himself. The seven redemptive names point to a continuous and increasing self-revelation. In his redemptive relation to man, Jehovah has seven compound names which reveal him as meeting every need of man for his lost state to the end. Glory to God. That's Schofield. That's good stuff. Now, you, if you want to know who Schofield is, Schofield is the, is the Hagen to the Baptist. Is that not right? I mean, you know, a lot of you have Hagen Bibles or Copeland Bibles. They got Schofield Bibles. All right, and that's not that the word anybody's better. I'm just saying, I mean, he, he had it. Glory to God. Amen. He's, he's, he's very, very, very good stuff here. And so we have here that is the, he's a self existent one. He reveals himself. The seven redemptive names point to, this is what Coscopo says, to a continuous and increasing self revelation in his redemptive relationship to man. So God pointed at himself and said, I'm your physician. I'm your healer. I'm the Lord that healeth thee. Glory to God. Can somebody say Shanda? Shanda. Yeah, gonna make old charismatics out of you. We're just gonna bring that the old charismatic flair, you know? Amen. You used to, you couldn't go to a meet without hearing Shanda at least 300 times. Now, if, if God had a covenant with natural Israel, and according to Hebrews, 
chapter 8, verse 6, that we have a better covenant established upon better promises. Now, I've made this argument before. There's a lot of people who come along and say, yeah, but that was just for the Jews. You know, we got a new covenant. Uh, I'm sorry. I have a hard time believing that my new covenant doesn't include all the good stuff from the old one. You know, we took out a bunch of, a bunch of good stuff. Now, how many have ever gotten new versions of Facebook or new versions of Windows and that kind of stuff? And they say the new Windows, and you think, give me the old one. Amen. When Windows 8 came out, I mean, I know a lot of people who just wanted to shoot their computers. If, you didn't have, if, your, if your computer wasn't a touch tablet screen or a tablet or a touch screen, you wanted to shoot Windows 8. I mean, my daughter still wants to shoot it. I've got, I've, I've put classic shell on it and all kinds of stuff, trying to make it think it was Windows 7, but Windows 8 still sneaks up. They took away, they take out stuff you didn't want them to take out. It's not better. It's worse. As a matter of fact, I can't, I can't stand it. I'm like, good gracious, give me M-E. Hallelujah. Brother, <laughs> Oh, let's give, give me 98. Hallelujah. Yeah, oh, let's, let's go back to DOS. Forget Windows altogether. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You know, when, when you bring something that's going to be better, you know, you get a brand new car, you know. And, and, and usually what they do is when they give you a new car, they take all the features that were all great in the old one, get rid of all the bad stuff, and then, and then they add newer and cooler stuff to it. That's, you, that, that, that's the new model. Everybody raised over the new model. Isn't that right? See, the Windows people, they, they, and the Microsoft people, they live in their own world. They think backwards is better. Anyway, is that enough about Microsoft for the night? Yeah, all right. Huh. Yeah, I could go on if I want. <laughs> Bro, the, the evil empire. Hallelujah. You know, Bill probably would take a Microsoft logo and put Darth Vader in it or something. <laughs> but we got a new covenant. Now, the Bible says a better covenant established upon, or a new covenant established upon better promises. That means that everything that's good in the old is still coming over. Now, remember this. Did God not say in one place, I am the Lord and I change not? I am the Lord and I change not now understand if you look at the things and it's amazing to me when people want to say that God doesn't heal today that's that was old covenant we still believe the Lord's always there Jehovah Shammah we still believe the Lord is our peace Jehovah Shalom we still believe the Lord's our shepherd we I mean you got people who say God God you know God's we're not we're done with the Old Testament we're New Testament and they still quote the 23rd Psalm like you know like nobody's business amen we still believe the Lord's our shepherd we still believe the Lord will provide Jehovah uh, Jireh. We still believe the Lord is our victory. Amen. Jehovah Nisi. The people, uh, we still believe the Lord is our righteousness. To Jehovah Jesidkenu. But somehow, no, we get the healing, and all of a sudden, God don't do that anymore. Oh, He can. He just don't. Hello. Remember, the Lord said, I, "This is a revelation of Himself to us. This is not something He just dreams up in the middle of walking with man, and all of a sudden, now He's a healer." This is who he is. This isn't something he just decided to do. He gave a self, as Scopel says, an increasing self-revelation of himself. So when he said, I am the covenant God, the self-existent God who heals, that is who he is. And so just because we have a new covenant, he did not stop being that. Hello? Hello? He didn't stop being Jehovah to Sidkenu when we got the new covenant. The application of it was different. It was no longer a righteousness of, of works under the law. It became the righteousness of faith in, by, by, by faith in Jesus Christ, and an inward righteousness was worked. But he's still our righteousness. He's still our peace. He is still our healer. Somebody say glory. The Lord is still our healer. It is who he is. When we look at the Lord Jesus Christ as he walked the earth and he ministered to the sick and he laid hands on the sick and, he, he, and, I, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to diverge from my notes here because we're in a good place to diverge from my notes. Hallelujah. But when Jesus walked the earth, remember Jesus said this in one place. He said, I came not to do my will but the will of him that sent me. The things that I do, I, I see it the Father do. You know, the Father in me, he doeth the works. So what was Jesus saying? But what did he tell Philip? 
He said, Philip, have I been with you so long? Don't you understand? He that has seen me has seen the Father. Amen. I said, Amen. Jesus said, well, Hebrews even says this, the express image of his, of, of his being. Over in Hebrews chapter 1, Jesus was the express image of his, of his, of his being. And so Jesus came and walked the earth. And everything you see Jesus do, or, or did, everything Jesus did, they saw him do, but he did, was the will of the Father. And Jesus even said, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Well, what does the Bible say? He went round about their villages, preaching in their synagogues, I mean, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness among the people. Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing G-O-O-D, good. And healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Isn't it amazing the Bible says that healing was good and people who were, who were sick, it was oppression from the devil? And now you come along, to, if you're healing the sick, you're of the devil, and say, God's using the sickness to teach you something. But the Bible doesn't say it that way. But notice that here we have this, that, that Jesus went doing good, healing sick. That his ministry was, you know, preaching, teaching, and healing. And then we go over to Hebrews, the 13th chapter, I believe, the 8th verse, and it says, Jesus Christ, the same, yesterday, today, and forever. Isn't that what it says? Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, doesn't that go back and relate to the Old Testament scripture? I am the Lord, and I change not. And so God said, I am Jehovah Rapha. It is his nature to heal. It is his nature and his will to heal. Somebody say double glory. So if God doesn't change, he revealed himself as the healer. If Jesus came and his ministry reflected the healing works of God, part of the compound covenant name of God that God gave to the children of Israel, Amen. And we, according to the book of Hebrews, have a better covenant established upon a new covenant established upon better promises. What's the better promise? The biggest one is that we don't have a righteousness after the flesh. We have one of the Spirit. We get born again. We don't get the promise every night. We get the real deal. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. That's, that's the better part of that new covenant. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So he's a mediator of a better covenant, which was established by better promises. Glory to God. See, when you die, you don't go to Abraham's bosom. You go to heaven. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And the, under the old covenant, when you were absent from the body, you went to Abraham's bosom. You didn't get to go to heaven. You had to wait until Jesus came. Right? Praise God. We got, we got some cool stuff. In our, but that, that, all of that did not change who God is. See, even under the old covenant, when they were obtaining righteousness by being doers of the law and carrying out all the ordinances of the law, still he was still Jehovah to sit canoe. He was still the Lord, their righteousness. He was the covenant God of righteousness. He did not change being the covenant God of righteousness under the new covenant. He just enabled them to experience it in a, different, in a way that wasn't of the flesh. It was of their spirit. He didn't change being the healer just because we got to the new covenant. He's still our healer. He's still our peace. Hallelujah. He's still our provider. Glory to God. Somebody shout hallelujah. He's still all those things. That's because that's who he is. I like the way Schofield stated it, an increasing self-revelation. That's awesome. So every covenant name was an increasing self-revelation of him to them and to us also. I'm glad we didn't leave this house. Somebody said, you know, we need to get the Old Testament scriptures out of the canon and we wouldn't have all the trouble we have. Oh, I'm glad we have all those. It, gives, it shows me something about the Father. It gives a revelation of who the Father is to me. Can you say Amen. It shows me his character, his nature, what he is, what he's all about, how he operates, how he functions, how he acts, what his, what his desire is. And in the fallen state of man, he said, I'm your healer. Even in their rebellion, even in their, in their resistance to him, even in all the things they did, he looked at him and said, I'm your healer. Glory to God. Amen. Now, remember uh, over in John, the third chapter, uh, uh, about verse 14 or 15, Jesus said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. 
Remember in the Old Testament when they got into sin, they got in rebellion, the, serp the fire serpents came up and began to bite them, and, they, and the people began to cry, and the Lord spoke to Moses and said, make a brazen serpent, put it on a staff, and if they're bitten, they look at it, they'll live. And to, to this day, we use a serpent on a pole as a medical symbol of health. Look on your next ambulance that goes by. There'll be a serpent on a pole in most cases. Well, everybody thinks, well, that's just, well, what's, the, the people who aren't educated don't even know what that is. The medical field knows what that is. They're referring to the serpent, the brazen serpent from, of Moses. And Jesus was the serpent to take our diseases and provide healing to us. The brazen serpent healed them. Amen. Glory to God. God is our healer. The Father is our healer. Jesus came to carry our, 1 Peter 2, 24, whose own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Glory to God. That's good news. And so healing did not pass away the day the last apostle died. I, I, I just come up, I, sometimes I wonder who made this stuff up? Then I realize the devil the devil taught me and they believed it. Oh, the healing passed away the day the last apostle died. Well, really, if you go study your Bible, there's still apostles today. They're not the same as the 12 apostles of the Lamb, but there's still Bible apostles today. The people come on and teach that when we, get the, when we got the canonosity of Scripture. Well, Paul did not say when we get canonosity of Scripture, because, and I'm going to tell you that without which is perfect has come is not scriptural canon, because he said, in that day I'll know even as I am known. How many of you know even as you're known? No, because that's a day that's coming. We have not stepped into the day that you know even as you are known. Do you know God and do the things of God the way he knows you? Please don't be silly enough to raise your hand on that one because you don't. Now, when Paul said when that which is perfectly come, he did say, I, though we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, no, face to face. And I'll know even as I am known. It's not the same. We do not walk in that place of revelation. So it cannot be the canon of Scripture. What? It's the return of the Lord. When corruptible shall put on incorruptible, mortals shall put on immortality, and we'll be changed in the moment in the twinkling eye, and we, be, we shall be as he is, John says. For we shall see him as he is. Woo, glory. That's enough to make you become a Pentecostal and run the church three times. Amen. So why ain't y'all running? All right. Hallelujah. So healing is ours. Can you say amen to that? Amen. You know, you just kind of, praise God. I'm looking here at what we need to cover. Anything else out of these notes? Because, you know, we, some of these things we just kind of pick, we cherry pick some of these sermons I have on these. Because we're, we're doing the healing rally. I can't, I don't want to keep preaching, you know. I think the Lord takes something out of it and go in a different direction. That, and that's what we've done tonight. Amen. Jesus was anointed for a purpose, to carry out the will of God. And that included healing, Remember? He went about healing, you know, went, went around about the villages, he, teaching, preaching, and healing. Amen. He, he was anointed by the Holy Ghost and power to do good and to heal all that were oppressed of the devil. Glory to God. God tells us where sickness comes from. Now, just because you're sick doesn't mean you got it, you've got a devil. But all sickness comes from the devil, ultimately. Now, you may have been around somebody and got, and got, you know, they had a virus and you got the virus on you and you carried it. You got it. And the devil, there wasn't the devil there running it back and forth. But Satan is the author of sickness. Okay? He, he, he's caused that perversion in the earth. You know, and set things in the motion in the natural and, just, and it just runs out there. But have you noticed that some things come in crazy cycles? All of a sudden, you don't have some of the weirdest diseases nobody's ever heard of before. What is that? Hell just un opened up and unleashed a new one on the earth. It unleashes the it un, spirits are unleashed. I remember about 15 years ago, it was kidnapping, killing, and killing little babies, two-year-olds and three-year-olds. Remember that? And then we went through several years that that was happening all over the place. Now, what you don't hear about it much anymore, do you? Well, I, well I, church probably got together, started praying, and stopping it. But it was hell unleashed and let stuff out. That happens all the time. And then all of a sudden, these, these weird diseases come along. What's the, hell will just open up and release some new stuff into the earth. And, and, and the church got to get busy and pray it out. Believe God and get rid of it. Amen. I said amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, everybody say, Jesus, Jesus is my healer. Is my healer. 
God, the, the fact of the matter is God is the same. He is inherently Jehovah Rapha, and he always will be. And he will not change.